What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and this is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. It's Tuesday, which means we're talking waivers. This is gonna be a ridiculous week. The starting lineups that are going to be trotted out in fantasy football, this might be the most ridiculous week of fantasy football starting lineups in the history of, of fantasy football. Like I got a league where I'm grateful to be starting Austin Hooper in my super flex spot. It's a dynasty league where I have like, I only hit Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins are my only two starting quarterbacks, super flex. Cousins on a bye, Christian McCaffrey out, Cam Akers obviously out, Deontay Johnson out, Jerry Judy out. There's like four more players I can't think of that are all out. Jared Cook, my starting tight end. It's it's bad. The lineups this week are for the fucking streets, boys and girls. So this waiver wire, while it's not, it ain't packed with the gems, all right? It ain't packed necessarily with the Tiffany's gems. I think we can hit Canal Street and pull off a, a, a few a few fake gems. There's some fraudulent, beautiful gems to be had out there that I think you can you know, fill your outfit with, pull it off. No one will know. No one will know that Devonta Freeman is actually a fraud because he's going to produce for you this week. Okay. That's the type of shit we're talking about on the waiver wire this week. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. For now, we must tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. I'm getting a cold, bro. Usually my like morning, I don't really have a morning routine. I'm not one of those people, but as soon as I get up, I try to get outside and get like natural sunlight and I go for a walk for like 30 or 45 minutes. You know, it gets cold out here in New York, man. And it's starting to hit that point where I'm actually sniffling and getting a cold from it and shit. But, you know, winter's for pulling off the fits. That's the only good part about winter is the dressing, the style, the clothing, the layers, layers on there's levels to this shit. I'm actually gonna make a vlog this week, I think, and talk about some of the clothing that I'll cop for winter. You know, the summer's for frolicking around naked. The winter's for pulling off the fits, though, and having a bright red nose from being really cold. Let's jump into the waivers, because that's why you guys came here not to listen to me bullshit. Uh, we're not gonna go into quarterbacks because I only play in super flex leagues and uh and I'm not gonna talk about one quarterback streaming leagues. Change your fucking league settings. I will say though. If you are really desperate at quarterback in Superflex leagues, Tyrod Taylor, Ryan Fitzpatrick, if they're not back this week, they will probably be back week eight the latest. So if you need a quarterback three or even a quarterback two, honestly, Fitz, Fitz could probably be that for you. Now is the time to scoop those two. One of those two. That's the quarterback syndrome. Let's talk about the running backs. The biggest name to talk about is Dearness Johnson, obviously, because Kareem Hunt's going to be out with the calf. They play on Thursday night, two days from now. So Kareem Hunt's out. It's going to be out for the foreseeable future. Nick Chubb, supposedly he might play on Thursday. Uh, I would put that at like a 95% chance he does not play, which will leave Dearness Johnson kind of holding the running back spot in this backfield. Now you have Dearness Johnson, you have Demetric Felton. Demetric Felton is a rookie, late pick. He is like a wide receiver converted running back. He's just like a hybrid type player, like a scat back, if anything. He has zero carries on the year. They're not going to trust him to run the ball. This week he'll get tops like three carries probably he might be like the third down back all right he might be the third down back for cleveland he might get a little bit more action in the receiving game i believe he has like two targets in every game this year so he's a little bit involved he might get more involved depending on whether or not jarvis landry's in or out or odell beckham's in or out we don't know if baker mayfield's playing dearness johnson is definitely the play here we've seen him be the go-to guy last year i think it was like week four where nick chubb left early cream hunt was there Darren johnson got like 10 or 12 carries ripped off like 95 or 100 yards the thing to know about Darren johnson like objectively he is a 200 pound back that ran like a 4 8 5 40 yard dash he's not explosive not a big play guy it's probably a one week rental maybe two weeks if nick chubb misses another week but i wouldn't expect that i'm not dropping any sort of significant money on Darren Johnson, even if you're wildly desperate. This is not the week to drop it all. Uh, there are going to be a lot of teams hurting. What I would suggest you do is go look at your matchup before you just look at your starting lineup because there's a chance that while your starting lineup is going to look like straight gonorrhea, what if the person you're playing has AIDS? You know what I'm saying? Like There could be worse things. The person you're playing might have Dalvin Cook, 
Najee Harris and Deontay Johnson and C.D. Lynn. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if that's the case, then you don't have to blow a lot of fab money because, you know, you're you're fighting fire with fire. So I would look at the matchup before you decide what you need to blow on fab this week to try to pull off a win. Dearness Johnson's number one. I think he will obviously the backfield and carries. Uh, Demetric Felton, I think, will probably be less involved than people think. Like, I think people think he's going to be like Kareem Hunt or he's going to be really involved in the passing game. I just don't think that's really the case. So PPR, maybe he puts up like eight points, you know, but I'm not... I'm not getting too excited about him. All right, let's talk about the other big name for agents. My my favorite pickup this week is probably J.D. McKissick. I'm really nervous about Antonio Gibson. I think they shut him down for this week. This is totally speculative. I could be totally wrong. I have a feeling they're going to shut him down for this week, if not longer, and that means J.D. McKissick's going to become the guy. You have Jared Patterson, who's like a smaller back, not explosive. He'll take carries as well, but I think they'll trust J.D. McKissick more than anyone else, right? Jared Patterson will probably get like 10 carries, not do much with him. We don't know who the goal line back is going to be, but we know who the pass catching back is going to be. And J.D. McKissick obviously gets more work with Antonio Gibson out if he does miss time in the running game. So I really like J.D. McKissick. If you can pick him up off your waiver wire, I would definitely be, especially in PPR leagues, I would be down to spend 10, 15, 20% of my budget left on Mr. J.D. McKissick. Jared Patterson for me is kind of like a zero or a dollar fab bid type guy. I... Low key love Devonta Freeman. I love Devonta Freeman, bro. Like Latavius Murray's probably dealing with a high ankle sprain. Okay, it's going to be a committee. Tyson Williams is going to be active, and he's probably the best back there. But Ra- the Ravens have shown that they don't give a fuck. All right, Le'Veon Bell looks like a high school player at this point when he's on the NFL field. He looks like he's on Percocets every time he gets a, like a toss play. Like he's literally moving in slow motion. Uh, Devonta Freeman, however, looks good. Devonta Freeman, honestly, last year on the Giants, he looked good too before he got hurt. That was that was my problem. Like I told people not to pick him up last year for the Giants because they had a huge hole at the running back position. I knew they were going to force him into that hole and immediately give him like 25 touches. He can't do that, right? Again, he's like 200, 205 pounds. If you give him 20 touches, he's going to die. He's not built like he he's not built to withstand that workload like he was when he was younger. But in this offense, like you could be really efficient in fantasy on 12 to 15 touches. And I think Devonta Freeman will see that if Latavius Murray misses significant time. So Devonta Freeman is actually low key, probably my favorite waiver wire pickup this week. He looks way more explosive than any other running back they have on their team. Uh, and I think that they can probably clearly see that and they trust him. Uh, he's in on the goal line, getting pass catching work. So like I, I like Devonta Freeman a lot this week. He is the guy that I'll be targeting that you can probably get for less than the other guys. Um, so J.D. McKissick, Devonta Freeman, Dearness Johnson. The Seattle backfield's interesting because Chris Carson is on the IR. Alex Collins got banged up at the end of the game. P. Carroll did not rule him out. He's dealing with some groin injury. And behind him, we have like an interesting mix of DJ Dallas, who was a wide receiver-ish running back at Miami, really good pass catcher. And we saw him take over that role in Seattle this week. And he came in last year and had a really big game when he was the featured running back. So we've seen them trust him. We've seen them. We've seen him do it on an NFL field, which is good to see. It'll probably be a committee no matter what. And they said Rashad Penny is going to be coming off the IR. Pete Carroll said he's going to be full go, which is like not a thing that Rashad Penny ever is. So I'm not really buying too much into that. I think Dallas and Rashad Penny are probably both worth rostering. At this point, I mean, people keep saying Penny has more upside, but like I, I get it. His combine was sexy like five years ago. Does that mean he has upside in the NFL? I really don't know at this point. Uh, I think both of them are rostering. I would probably rather, if I'm going to play someone this week, it would be DJ Dallas. One, because they're playing against the Saints and really hard to run. So if Penny's going to be like the early down back, he's not going to have much success because they don't let up successful running back performances on the ground. But DJ Dallas will catch a bunch of passes. So I like uh, I like DJ Dallas a little bit more than Rashad Penny, but I think both of them should probably be rostered at this point, uh, did I miss out anyone in the running back situation? No, nah, I don't think so. Obviously, like Khalil Herbert, name uh, Daryl Williams, if somehow either of those guys are available on your roster, you you spend the big bucks on them, or available on your waiver wire, you spend the big bucks on them, but they should have been your priority ads last week. I'm move over to the wide receiver position right quick. And uh, I guess going back to the Browns, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a little bit interesting. He's going to come off the big game. He's going to get a little bit more hype than uh, than he should be getting because he had the Hail Mary at the end of the first half, so his stats looks really good. But Jarvis Landry didn't play last week. Maybe he plays this week. Maybe he doesn't coming off the IR. I think he does play. 
Um, it's almost like the OBJ situation where OBJ probably came back to the team less than 100% when he first came back this year because the team needed him with Jarvis Landry out. I think Jarvis Landry might see that the team is hurting right now. So he might push himself to get back into the mix of things um, and probably push himself to be on the field. And if that's the case, I think he'll be the most targeted player on the Browns. But with Kareem Hunt out, Nick Chubb out, you know, we don't know about Jarvis Landry or Odell Beckham Jr. Again, a lot of moving parts here. Uh, I haven't seen any updates yet, but Donovan Peoples-Jones might be like the most targeted guy in that offense if all these things break incorrectly. So Donovan Peoples-Jones, um, Marcus Callaway, dude, I said this last week, and I think the report came out yesterday that Michael Thomas is still weeks away. Uh, this was what I basically said to y'all all fucking summer. Don't draft injuries. Don't find injuries because they're going to find you. And we're looking at it now. Like Antonio Gibson came into the year banged up, less than 100% injured. When you come into the year, it doesn't make you injury prone, but if you come into the year with an injury already, the re-injury risk is much higher relative to all the other players who are not coming into the year with an injury, right? Even like Julio, even drafting Julio Jones. I have Julio Jones in one redraft league, and it felt grimy as fuck drafting him. It's a 12-team league, and he dropped to the end of the seventh round. And at that point, I was like, fuck, all right, I'll take Julio Jones. I didn't want to. Felt grimy, but I did it because, I don't know, I thought there was going to be upside. He came into the year... Banged up, injured. Guess what? He's re-injured it seven fucking times already. Again, we have to stop drafting players injured in the summer. I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. But, oh, Marquez Callaway. Yeah, Michael Thomas not returning for a few weeks, I believe they said. Like, everyone was like, best case scenario, he'll be back by week seven. And then I got a wide receiver one. It's like, okay. So now, a few more weeks. What is that? Week seven, week eight, maybe, you know, week nine or ten. And then he's probably got to get acclimated back to being on the field, make sure that the injury is actually, like, up to speed and he could run fully. Might be, like, week 12 by the time you could fucking use this guy. Which is why I didn't want to use, like, a seventh or eighth round pick on him. Regardless... Depending on the status, keep a really close eye on the injuries. You might not even have to pick up Marquez Callaway. There might not be anyone that goes to pick him up on your waiver wire. So you you might be able to wait later into the week to see what's going on. Um, Because Deontay Harris got hurt at the end of last week. Traquan Smith has been hurt. He's been on the IR. Uh, Michael Thomas, obviously, not returning. So if those three guys are out, there's nobody else to throw the ball to. And I know, you know, it's a game where they're playing Seattle. So they're playing Geno Smith. They're probably going to go into this game trying to control clock and trying not to, you know, risk anything. No, no need to risk anything here from Jameis. So he might get 20 pass attempts off. But, you know, I, I could see that turning into seven or eight targets for Marquez Callaway. Again, coming off of season high game last week where he caught two touchdowns, two big plays. Um, if those three guys are out, though, there's nobody else to throw the ball to. So I kind of like Marquez Callaway as a sneaky flex play. Uh, the Colts situation is kind of ugly because T.Y. and Paris Campbell both got hurt, so you keep you know just trotting out Michael uh, Pittman. Who else we got at wide receiver? Oh, obviously Sterling Shepard. So Sterling Shepard comes back, gets 14 fucking targets in this game. First game back, 10 catches, 76 yards. That is all to do with Kadarius Tony, right? Their first drive, Daniel Jones' his first four passes, three of them went to Tony, three catches, 36 yards. Tony gets hurt with the ankle injury. I think he's going to miss this week, if not more which means Sterling Shepard becomes basically the number one target in that offense. Kenny Galladay, maybe he returns, maybe he doesn't. Darius Slayton, I don't give a fuck if he returns. Uh, Saquon's going to be out this week again. Uh, Sterling Shepard's going to get another 10 targets this week. Basically, like I said yesterday in this live stream where I recapped every game of week six, so make sure you guys go check that out. It's like it's like you take Kadarius Tony and like you space jam, zap out his powers, any yak powers he has, and you get Sterling Shepard. But that's a lot of fucking targets. So PPR League's 10 for 76, beautiful game out of Shepard. Uh, and you love to see that. The Giants get Carolina, Casey, Las Vegas, all teams you could throw against. So I'll be really, even if Kenny Galladay's back, I'll feel really confident throwing Sterling Shepard into my lineup. Uh, we can talk about Henry Ruggs. I talked about him yesterday, right? He's got as many fantasy points this year as Keenan Allen. He's a wide receiver 27 on the year. Um, not seeing a ton of targets, but him and Carr are starting to sink, especially on those deep, deep balls, man. He's gone over 50 yards in every week since week one. He has the second most catches of 40 plus yards. Only Jamar Chase has more than him. And he's 13th in the NFL in receiving yards. So um, Ruggs is having a really good year. He's playing really, 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 really well. And clearly, like the Raiders are unaffected by the John Gruden news. If anything, it fucking boosted them. They came together. So Henry Ruggs, not a guy I'm like confident having in my lineup. But again, there are going to be some fucking lineups this week that make you want to straight yak, make you want to fucking uke like a Sunday morning, dude. So rugs, there there will be lineups where rugs can be had. Uh, I mean, we could talk about Jalen Waddle, but I'm assuming he's pretty fucking owned. Got a million targets. 
uh, this tweet from uh, Ian Harditz. Uh, Jalen Waddle average target depth by week with Tua in, with Tua out. So if you see just broken down, basically, basically what they're saying is when Tua is the quarterback, Jalen Waddle's average depth of target is around ten. When Tua is when Tua is in, sorry, when Tua is out and Brissett is playing, his average depth of target is around like two to three yards. So big difference when it comes to Waddle and Tua playing. Obviously, Tua makes a difference in this offense. Uh, another tweet from Dwayne, Dwayne McFarlane on Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle was in on a route on 94% of Miami's pass play season high and garnered 28% of the targets. He accounted for 30% of third and fourth down targets and 50% of the looks inside the five. This should really, again, be no surprise because Preston Williams, Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, Jakeem Grant, all not on the field for the Miami Dolphins. Fuller eligible to return in week eight from IR. Uh, Preston Williams was limited all week last week, so I do expect him to suit up. Parker missed all of practice last week, so 50-50 chance he does not suit up again. Uh, if he's out, obviously you start Waddle against the Atlanta Falcons, and you probably do it either way because, again, it is the by apocalypse uh, Those are probably the wide receivers that I would say have the most appeal on the waiver wire this week. When we talk about tight ends, Hunter Henry's probably owned, but the guy keeps, keeps scoring touchdowns. Ricky Seals-Jones has got to be owned at this point. The other two that I would say are probably unowned but should be picked up, if you have buys or you're hurting at the position, Dan Arnold of Jacksonville continues to be super involved, gets like five, six targets a game. Eventually, those will start linking up. He had a bad, bad drop on a slant that probably would have resulted in a touchdown last week, and we'd be looking at him as a must-add waiver wire tight end target. So Arnold and Trevor Lawrence are starting to get a real real connection there. So Dan Arnold and then Mo Alley-Cox. Wentz is – Wentz, don't let Wentz heat up. Don't let Wentz heat up. Not a QB1, the QB1 this year in fantasy. Carson Wentz has found his tight end that he likes, and that is Mo Ali Cox. Big touchdown this week. Should have had two big touchdowns this week. Starting to get more and more and more and more and more involved in the red zone now with Paris Campbell and T.Y. Hilton banged up. I think he is startable at the tight end position. All right? So that is all I got for y'all this week. That is the waiver wire column. If you want the in-depth fab guidance article that is up on the site right now, bdge.store forward slash community. It's also where you'll get my weekly rankings. Those will be out Thursday around noon Eastern time. All right, bdge.store forward slash community. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Throw the D in it so it says you're subscribed. I love y'all and I'm out. Goodbye.